Welcome everyone. Marhaba. Uh, today we have Dr. Parvez on the show. I personally have gained so much from him. He's a doctor with so much knowledge and so much to share. And we're going to try our best to break it down for you so you understand it. Because I would love to share what he has taught me and the benefits I've received, body, mind and soul, backed by science and a doctor. So stay tuned. Welcome, Dr. Parvez, to the show today. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for the wonderful invitation. And uh, I'm, I'm re very thrilled and happy to have this opportunity today to sit with you. And I'm thrilled as well because I've personally learned so much from you. And I've seen you as a normal doctor, but then I was like, no, he's much more than that. So I would love to share that with the audience and maybe speak a bit more about the naturopathic medicine that you go into and, the, and then your journey through it into the quantum integrative medicine, correct me if I've said it wrong. That is correct. Um, sure, that sounds great. Uh, you see, my medical training started in the conventional system of, uh, of medicine back in 1980s. Of course, I'm originally Iranian and, and at that time they asked any university student who could do something to help and we volunteered. I participated in the war zones as paramedics in two periods. The second one was almost about six months towards closing the war. And that was an incredible, although very traumatizing experience. For us as students, we got a chance to see things which usually no other students during medical training could ever get a chance to see. So we became really good with our hands and, and dealing with massive wounds, amputations, lacerations, imminent death. So I felt really good about the experience that I had, so did a lot of my friends. But when we started to, to work in internal medicine, we realized that uh, actually medications cannot help that much. Although all the teachers were like professors, very well educated and very large and thick textbooks, there was nothing to, for actual cure of diseases in terms of chronic situations. It was all palliating and, and dealing with the symptoms and of course you had to increase the dose of the medicine and the number of the medications and those medications created additional toxicity to the body and all these people who at that time looked like my grandma and my grandpa, they died of, of toxicity of medicine and, and we were desperate, there wasn't anything we could do and typically a doctor would come and sign the file as cardiac arrest or whatever as the cause of the death. There is no autopsy, there is no report because the whole system was like that. So it was kind of uh, very disappointing to me personally. The technique that the Chinese do by putting needles on the body, they could shift the position of a little child in the fetus or pregnant mother. Oh, it drove me crazy. And I was asking why we are not being taught stuff like that. What do they do which is different than ours? What is the connection between that little pinky toe and the womb of a pregnant mother? What forces causes this bridge baby to change its position? Oh, it drove me crazy. I was looking for it. Until the time that I got a chance to emigrate to Canada. There, while I was trying to go back to a dental school and finish what I had in hand, I was acquainted for the first time with the concept of alternative medicine. I got a chance to study and understand what naturopathic medicine was, what, what chiropractic medicine was, and a lot of other different forms of alternative medicine. Then I realized this is it, this is what I want to do, because not only do they deal with the body, they, they also understand and deal with the, with the fields around the body, emotions, mind, thoughts, behavior, what to eat, how to eat. So, Naturopathic medicine was a blessing for me, so I learned about the philosophy of Chinese medicine, not just doing acupuncture. I learned about the philosophy of homeopathy, not just, just using some remedies for symptom therapy. I was taught a lot of techniques in physical medicine, how your hands could help people with a lot of pain issues or problems in the physical body, and so on and so forth. So basically I became an expert having a toolbox containing a lot of different tools. If it didn't work on the patient, we can use another one, we can use another one. It, it was really amazing, it was good. I graduated and I got certified as a, uh, as a naturopathic physician in, in Canada and North America. Sometime later, we decided to move to Dubai. 
I came here, I took my licensing exam at the Ministry of Health in Abu Dhabi, which is the capital, and I, I was accepted as the very first registered naturopathic physician in this country, so I became a pioneer. They told me, congratulations, you are approved. Go and open it. It's yours now. And they gave me a, an, an independent practice license status so I could open my own clinic anywhere in the vicinity of the United Arab Emirates. That was a privilege, and I'm really grateful to the opportunities that this, this country has given me because it made me what I am today. When I came here, I brought with me a, a, a quantum machine, a newly introduced device in medical system which could uh, pick up signals from a client, not just from the physical part, but also from the emotion, mind, from the memories, from the traumas, from past and future, because uh, this, is, this is the meaning of quantum. It goes beyond the borders of time and space. I will later on explain more about this quantum, what it is so that I, I give you more insight and understanding about the form of the medicine I practice today. Beautiful, thank you. And that there were so many jewels in what you said. Um, first, I'd like to say as well, thank you because whatever the country has given you, you've given back to us. And I'm one of those people who received um, the magic of what your, your toolbox and your knowledge and what you have to share with us. I remember coming into your office, someone said, go to Dr. Parvis. And I'm like, who is he? <laughs> They're like, naturopath. I'm like, what does that even mean? <laughs> what do you mean naturopath? I said, oh, he gives you uh, natural remedies for, uh, for whatever you're going through, whatever trauma. I said, okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm generally a skeptic. So I said, okay, let's try this. And I remember visiting you. And you put me on the, I guess it was the quantum machine at that time. It was, yes. You put me on this, uh, you strapped my arms and my legs and my head, and I was intrigued. And I was like, wow, what is this? And I started asking you questions. Because in my nature, I like to ask. I like to be inquisitive and know more, to know that you know what you're doing. It's not just a machine. Because personally, as well, being a, being a facilitator and a teacher, we have all these toolboxes, and many people have it. But then what they do with it is comes from their experience, their awareness, their wisdom, their understanding of their life situations, what they've learned, and then they come and use those toolbox as something to share with others. Not only were you were you, you know, on the scientific, you were talking the science behind it, but I also felt the heart in you. I also felt that you connected, you heard me, you listened. I think that's what really mattered for me personally, as someone coming to a doctor. Is he just doing what the book said? Or is he also a human being tapping into that intuitive awareness in that moment, listening to what the person's story is, sharing from their own traumas, their own emotions, their own belief systems, and picking up what the what the what science says and then what the moment, that present moment is saying as well. So I remember when I walked in, I was in a very in a space of feeling very unworthy, very down, very um, unsupported by men in my family, you know, like I had to abide by them and I had to, and I felt it doesn't feel right. And I remember when I came to you, you kind of gave me this boost of power saying, you know, you have a right to be who you want to be. You have a right to, to be loved. And I said, yeah, and, and, and hearing it from a man backed by this doctor, backed by all these signs, and I'm like, oh, so it's not just those intuitive spiritual people as well, there's also doctors speaking the same language. And then I remember walking out after the, the session. During the session, I didn't cry. I was very, you know, it was a conversation, I was intrigued. And the moment I got into my car, I cried as if <laughs> someone had taken my child away. And I was so clueless as to, why am I crying? What happened? What did he do? What, what just happened? So can you tell us a bit more about what, is the, what happens from your, and I shared my experience, but from your experience, what is it that you are playing with here? What are the, what are the elements that you bring into the equation as you have a... Okay, that's a very good question. You see, uh, the creation, the nature, and everything that ever exists is a lot bigger than what I or you could imagine. Okay? We just believe in what we can see. But 
what we can see is a tiny, tiny, tiny little fraction of the truth. Okay? This is applied to the concept of health and disease as well, because the nature of a human being is incredibly complicated. One of the fascinating things about the quantum medicine is that it gave me the idea to look beyond what I could observe with my eyes or hear with these ears. You see, medicine is supposed to be explained by a science background, by a science backbone. Uh, conventional physics, which is classical physics, is a science that is used for, the, for, the, for every other scientific uh, modalities practiced today at a conventional level. The conventional medicine is based on this conventional biology. So whatever is in this body, if there is a problem, we have to see it, we have to measure it. That's why they do MRI, CT scan, different PET scans, blood tests, urine tests, biopsy, surgery, they have to open to see. And the quantum? Quantum is, is, is a science, the same physics, but it goes a lot deeper than those particles. It goes through a very tiny little subatomic particles of the same particles. At that level, a lot of new, a lot of different things of new worlds starts to open up. I'll, I'll explain to you very briefly. In the beginning of 1920s or 1900s, the physicists discovered this world of quantum by experimenting uh, work on single little electron that was thrown. So they, uh, there was a machine invented which could throw one little electron at the same time. At that moment, they realized a lot of unbelievable results, which it was really unbelievable. They couldn't understand what happened. For instance, they realized that when they put a measuring device, when they look, they see a little marble type structure being thrown as if you threw a baseball to the wall. It hits the ball, it comes back, yeah? But the moment that this measuring device, this looking action was taken away, it disappeared, it didn't stay as that piece of matter, it became waves of energy. Really strange, based on the act of observation. So when they look, they manifested, they created matter behavior out of those unlimited possibility of that waves of energy. And then they realized at the same time that that tiny little particle could appear in different places at the same time. Wow, this is crazy. So there's many of me then. Apparently. <laughs> okay. In different, some sense, in, in because your body is made of the same particles. If one little particle can appear in different places at the same time, so think about the rest, which can be applied it's to you. Based on science. All are science. This is science of quantum. They also realize that if they cut this little particle in half and they take these two halves away, when they tickle the first part and it starts to laugh, <laughs> the second part, regardless of this space, starts to laugh, it starts to react in this exact same manner at the exact same moment. So even though they were cut and separated by space, apparently the space and time didn't matter. They were still connected to each other, whereas in conventional physics, they say either I have to sit with you, I have to look at you or talk to you on the phone or touch your hand. Or, this is the way that we connect. If you go to America and I'm here and I haven't seen you for a while, how can I be connected to, to you? But the truth is that we can always be connected. We are always connected. There, there was a lot of other uh, amazing reactions they picked up at that moment. That was the beginning of the quantum mechanics. The birds are feeding you. Of course. <laughs> Everything is connected. They're happy. <laughs> now with quantum medicine, all we do is, the, is that we pull out this, this CD or the floppy disk okay. of classical mechanic and we put quantum mechanic instead. As opposed to using classical mechanic to explain biology and life and creation, we put quantum mechanic. Now we enter the, the truth about this creation. So With this one now, we can see the unseen. Okay, I, when I started working with, with quantum system, it was so fascinating that I, I got stimulated to know more because in my journey, I also bumped into other scientists who were working with quantum technology and quantum knowledge in their medical practice or medical measurements. 
and it was a massive encouragement to me to go further. And I'm a science guy. Something that I go after, it has to convince me. Believe me, I'm good at science. So later on, I got a PhD in quantum medicine because I just couldn't get enough. I needed to know more. So I became not only the, the first naturopathic uh, practitioner or doctor here, I became the first or maybe the only practitioner or a doctor who, who has a PhD in quantum medicine. So that makes me a different, you know, person in my work. Great. And my intention mm. for having you on the, on the, on the show and, and, and on the screen for people to hear is to integrate this into a practical, ex practical example of what it, it feels like and looks like. So when I shared that when I came and that's what I felt, and you're sharing that there's a quantum. So what I'm hearing you say is, because in your mind, you've removed that I'm a conventional doctor, and I'm a quantum therapist, I'm a quant quantum, I, I, I deal with the mechanics of quantum, that we're all connected, that it's not separate, that not because you have the stomach ache, I give you this pill, but if you have a stomach ache, it's linked to that organ and this Exactly. And that. You see, the truth, as I said, is different than the reality. You can look at a man and see him or her as a man. But in the truth, this person could be an angel, really, or could be a monster. So this could affect what we are. This could affect who we are. This could affect what we can achieve. And it's a black and white fact yes or no a human a person any object is not just what you can see and touch there are fields of energy around it when it is alive and breathing these fields are even bigger when there is consciousness involved the, the the individual consciousness it is even bigger so there is a bigger difference between the fields of energy around the human being and, and a plant although the plant has all these fields as well plant. including the soul yes absolutely okay Imagine you go to a party for the first time in your life. Imagine you're invited to a very big, beautiful beach house. So many people are invited and you are brand new in that city. Imagine actually you are not the person who's invited. It's your friend, but she insists to take you along with. And you're hungry. She says, we're gonna go there. There's gonna be amazing food, beautiful people, music. We're gonna have fun. Imagine you accept and you, you go along with her. She rings the bell. Ding dong. From this moment and on, I'll give you two different scenarios. Scenario number one, a host, a lady, well-dressed, a glass of orange juice in her hands. She comes and she opens the door to you without saying anything. She looks at you and she smiles. She leaves the door open, turns around, goes back inside. So what do you guys do? You take a peek inside. Wow, this is beautiful. And the music is amazing. And the smell of food, ah. Oh, you go in, you find the spot, you sit, you start enjoying your moment, you start talking to people, you introduce yourself, and people become fascinated. Wow, you're from Dubai? Oh, we love Dubai. And then you click with people. You make a great night that night, yes? Yes. Okay, scenario number two. Ding dong, she rings the bell. The lady comes, well-dressed, glass of orange juice in her hand, without saying anything like the other time. But this time, when she looks at you, she frowns. She turns around, goes back inside, leaves the door open. What do you do now? Can you go in? Can you sit? Can you enjoy? Can you dance? Can you have fun? Most probably you can't go in because you might feel, uh oh, I wasn't invited. I shouldn't have been here. They didn't even want if me. I do go in, something in me feels off. Bravo! Because your blood pressure is different, your hormone system is different, the uh, neurotransmitters balance is different. Your nerves are functioning in another level. Your perception is different. Your anger is high. Your mouth is dry. There is no digestive juice. You can't mm. sit, relax. If we check your blood pressure, your heartbeat, breathing rate, thousands of bio biochemical markers in your bl blood, even the quality of the sweat on your skin, and we compare between scenario and scenario two, is there anything similar? Okay. Absolutely not. So this physical body reacts based on the information 
it, it receives, okay? Now, this information sometimes is conscious, like we're talking to each other. Many, 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 many times it's subconscious. How much thyroid hormone do you need now? And how much thyroid hormone did you need when you moved to change the position of that table? It was different. Mm -hmm. But did you think about how much more or less you needed? No. Although it was controlled by the autopilot system in you. A perception. You received an information telling you, hey, what the hell are you doing here? Who told you to come? Yes. Now, imagine the lady who frowned at you, she didn't mean to frown at you. Just the moment before opening the door, she caught the maid doing something horribly wrong. She got really upset with the maid, but there was no time to complain. She opened the door with the frown on her, on her forehead. It wasn't at you, but you took the signal. So your perception change the field of information which is constantly imposed upon us. So the subconscious, as they say, is like 20 million times bigger than the conscious. This is the place where the information is set. So if I want to deal with chronic diseases, I have to understand what sort of wrong signal is being implemented on this particular individual, on this unique individual, based on her or his perception of life growing from the moment of conception until today. Wow, that's a big you see? Then you will have a better answer to understand the root of that disease. So when I see a client like you, I dedicate time. I can't just have five minutes. My appointments are one hour. I connect them to my machines, which scientifically works similar to an electrocardiogram machine. So the straps that you saw I put on your arms and leg to, is to create base and as opposed to putting one around the heart to pick up the electrical signal of the heart, we put a, a band around your head with seven connection and two skin tags to pick up your energy from matter and the non-matter, because this is quantum, remember? Yes. The non-matter, your thoughts, your feelings, your memory, your past, your aura, your chakra, we will have information. Plus, when I listen to the story of the person, and I look at them, I observe, I, observe a lot of, I observe a lot of additional information as well. I put all together to see, okay, how much does this make sense to me? And then when I look at the signals which are analyzed on my machine, I, I try to make sense of them because the word doesn't mean the word on the quantum system. You have to see the real meaning in the context of that person. That's why having the machine and click, click, click is not that important is the driver of the machine, which is important. How much you can understand? So I remember coming to you feeling very unworthy of being who I am as a woman, as an Arab in this country, as a Muslim. I remember feeling very scattered and foggy and unclear, and I'm looking for answers. And I'm looking actually for someone to make me feel like I'm human, that I'm worth being seen or looked at or appreciated just as I am without having to do anything or be a certain way. And um, I remember you asking me questions. I remember the way it went. You asked me, what is your relationship with your parents? That was the first question you asked me. And I was like, oh, interesting. It's about to do with my parents. And everywhere I go, any, any therapist I see, it's always got to do with parents. And then you said earlier that it's all on the perception. Conception, excuse me, on the day of conception, where everything starts to formulate the thoughts, the beliefs, the programmings. And, um, you know, my programming, my entire life growing up, no matter what I did, how advanced I was in certain things, how, how great I was at many things, how um, amazing other people saw me, but me within me, when the conversation within me was never that way. The conversation was, you're not good enough. You're not going to shine. You can't shine. There's no room or space for you to shine. And it made, always made me feel, even though I felt I had this force in me, this vitality, but it was blocked. It was stuck somewhere. And I couldn't reach it. I don't know how to activate it and how to bring that to life. And I felt that there was an imbalance, that it was not true, that everything I was told Everything they put in, they, they, they made me feel, whether it was family, society, religion, all that, something in me said, this feels off. This does not feel right. 
we have this vital force. This is where homeopathy affects. This is where meridians of Chinese medicine exist. We can't see it with this eye. With clearly and photography now, we can see a lot of them. There is another layer of energy beyond that, which moves faster and it is stronger. The outer it gets, the stronger it becomes. And that is the mind body. This is where the belief system is. I believe I'm not good. I believe, oh, I can't jump. I believe I'm not love, I'm not important. It affects not only the body, but that morphogenetic field as well. And then we have the spiritual body, which is wow. Okay? So, to understand the nature of imbalances, which as my medicine describes the concept of health and disease, lack of balance or existence of balance, it's important to see the information within the vital force, within the mind body, within the spiritual body, and how to integrate these things together. I'm just gonna collect some of the iron from your body. Hmm? Like this, I take some of the iron out. As long as the iron is in your body, it looks red. So it is like blood, it's like muscle and things like that. The moment that I bring it out of your energy system, it turns into some dust particles. Because after all, this body is nothing but a couple of fistful of dust. You know that. When the soul is gone, it turns into its nature, which is nothing but a fistful of dust. This iron, which used to be red and wet in your body, blood and liver and muscle, I take it out, it becomes powder of iron. Imagine I put this powder of iron on a piece of sheet, a paper sheet, and I start joking with it. It, it won't laugh, whereas you do. You nod your head. It, it won't. It's not alive as if, okay? It used to be you, but it's not anymore. Now imagine I grab a piece of magnet and I place it under this paper. What do you see now? All these particles suddenly realign themselves to follow the, the field of the magnetic energy of this. Huh? And imagine I turn on the music and I start dancing with this down here. What do you see up here with the particles? So that means the matter part is following information. Energy is information. Okay? Now, what sort of information is imposed on the, any individual which results in creation of sicknesses? That's important to me. And when I look at you, I don't see you as you. Because immediately around you, there's a layer of energy. We call it morphogenetic field. This is, this is the vital force. This is where aura and chakra is. This is where all the information of every organ blueprint exists. Actually, one day, they don't need to trans, uh, transplant a kidney from another person to this person. They can just stimulate the right order and the kidney will be pr produced in the body. The this is, this is the, through, 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 through that field of energy. I'm here only as a naturopathic physician and I do quantum, which is all about integrative medicine, integration of Western medicine with the, with the spiritual medicine, everything together. So, but this is the truth about, about the person. We understand wh where the source is from because we understand the layers of energy, but you cannot see them with MRIs, you cannot see them with x-rays, that's why medical doctors are never trained. You ask them, can you use your science or the biologist to explain what will happen to, to me when I die? There is no answer. Where was I before I came? There is no answer. But with quantum, we have answer. So Dr. Parvez, what do you think the future of medicine would be like? It's a very good question. You see, medicine is a part of life. Yeah, so what's the future of life? Uh, it's improving, definitely, like everything else. And the more knowledge people gain, the more insight people have about themselves, the more advanced the medicine will become. So the consciousness of the people of today in the world is rising very, very fast, actually exponentially. And as a result, we're going to have a beautiful world for future to come, including a lot of amazing things with medicine. You don't have to use a, an organ transplant in future, in my opinion, because the body has the ability to produce the organs or recreate the amputated limb. As a, as a lizard tail, for example, and I know a group of scientists who are already working on stuff like that with unbelievable results. 
there are ways to improve agriculture so without using any fertilizer or pesticide or herbicide you will increase the yield and better quality, better natural food and, and more fulfilling products. Um, the future of medicine depends on how fast the general population gain knowledge about who they are because the medicine is de depends on what we eat so food and quality of food, which people have very little information about, unfortunately, is about how we feel about ourselves, about lives, about our perceptions, and about our behavior, okay? But in terms of he uh, helping people with sicknesses, amazing technologies are, are appearing more and more. In the past, they were suppressed, like, Rife, Royal Rife, who discovered how to get rid of cancer in 1930s and proved it to the, to the healthcare authorities in America, the FDA and, and CDC, and he was totally suppressed. But today, this suppression cannot be implemented as before. It means the uh, new technologies are coming to the surface more than ever before and it's going to be exponential. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So to wrap that up, I guess you're saying we're awakening as humans as we awaken and we have more knowledge of who we are, which is my next question, who are we really? Oh, you are, you are all of this. You are everything that there is. When everything is connected and every particle can exist at any level, on any other level at the same time, you think about what you could be. I am you, you are me, we are everything. That's why the beautiful changes in future should happen when an individual like I, decide to change the faulty behavior in me. If I decide to look differently, if I decide to accept myself, not to criticize myself, if I decide to pray, not by standing and bending in front of something imaginary, but bringing the Lord, the consciousness, the power of Creator, the soul of the Creator into my heart and feel it and talk to it and not being afraid of its punishment and knowing that it is there for me and it loves me and it cares for me and it brought me to this world to give me a chance to enjoy this amazing life on this amazing beautiful planet then I become transformed. The whole world becomes transformed. So it's very important for every individual to become responsible. I could lie, but by lying, by wrongdoing, I generate unbelievably dark information. Wrong information on me which will be carried on. And that information will be translated. Energy will turn into matter. I can create a chair with beautiful energy, with ugly energy. What kind of chair will I get with them? A beautiful chair with a beautiful energy, an ugly one. So yes, there is heaven, there is hell. But it's not that God will put me there or reward me with this. What I deserve based on who I am. And I don't need to show it off because it is within me. So I need to open my heart, allow this beautiful light of consciousness to come in. So when you pray, whatever religion you believe is good, but let's take it inside. Imagine the room you are sitting at or standing at becomes your heart. Imagine this place becomes your heart. You close your eyes and you see yourself then. And the first thing you do is like you go to a dark place. What do you do first? You turn on the light. Just turn on the light. Just imagine you turn on the light in that room, which now you are imagining this is your heart and then light is the consciousness of the Creator. You Muslims believe, Allahu Nur as Samawad wal Arab. Let them come. Let them know that you understood it. It is within you. This is the goal, that I feel myself within it. But when I do it like this, I separate myself from God. God, please help me. I imagine it is something out there in the heaven. I am sitting here. Two problems with that. I create a border. I separate myself from God. So this is shirk because God becomes limited. And also I become insignificant if I'm not connected to this beauty of its power, then what am I? Nothing. So I become afraid now because I need now safety and security. I have to go under orders of others to control me so that they can give me safety or I can have to go out and make money. It doesn't matter what I do to take that money. To make that money, the money becomes important, not the way that I made the money. See, the whole world goes wrong. I need to open, I need to allow it to come within my heart. And then I sit down and I talk to him whether you are in a car or in your home whether you are standing in front of Qibla or you are Christian you go to the church or you're Jew you go to any religion anything any doesn't matter open your heart without being afraid allow the light of the consciousness to come imagine that area that room that hall becomes the area of your heart just imagine and then turn on the light 
bring the consciousness within and put your attention there and know that it is not there to hurt you. There is nothing to be afraid of God because it doesn't matter what I am. Before I came, it knew, it knew what I would do. Yes or no? If I'm a killer, it knew what I would do. Why did he bring me then? You guys say, kun fayakun. It could do like this and remove me. Why he doesn't do that? It doesn't do that. It's a chance for me to know myself, which is a part of its soul. And then the moment that I know it's like a little bubble that comes to the surface of the water, and then suddenly it connects to the unlimited amount of the air on the top of the ocean surface. It becomes me, I become it. That's why you become the creator. That's why you have its power to create. That's why it loves you unconditionally. It means it doesn't matter what you do. Open your heart, bring it in, be good to yourself because you are presenting the soul of the Creator. Let's hope for a better world. Let's awaken the people of the world, tell them, you are responsible, let's, let's do something now. Yes, sure, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dr. Parvez, it was very nice chatting with you and hearing all your inspirational sharing and the science behind it. So thank you very much for your time. Maybe in the near future we can have you and share more. You can count on me. I'm a teacher and I love sharing the information with people. I will be there again with you. Thank you so much.